Hello, and welcome back to the channel. So as a recent grad or a career transitioner, it can be really difficult to piece together all the different resources that you're seeing online into an accurate and complete roadmap of how to actually transition into data. You might be asking yourself questions like, how can I make the jump from another industry? Is it going to be possible for me if I have a full-time job, I don't have a lot of time, and I have a lot of other responsibilities in life? Or maybe you're also wondering, how much more money can I even get by transitioning into data? And does it even really get me that much more flexibility and freedom in life. So as a benchmark and hopefully a motivating note for you guys, on average, my students who transition from another industry into data increase their salaries by 33%. And they're coming from backgrounds in things like IT, sales, marketing, recruiting, education. And then this is their first data analytics job. And so in today's video, I wanna share with you guys the concrete steps that students take from a variety of different backgrounds to make this jump into data. And at the end, I will also show you real life examples of students that have done this and the things that they focused on along the way so that you can come out of this video with an actionable plan. If you are new here, I'm Christine. I'm a former data hiring manager and I'm also a data mentor who helps students go from aspiring to becoming standout data analysts so that you can land your first data job in four months or less. And on this channel, I share no fluff advice about how to actually do this. So if this sounds like that's up your alley, make sure to subscribe and let's dive in. So the first thing you need to do is just to be aware of the most common pitfalls. When you apply yourself in the wrong direction, it is a lot of wasted time and energy, and it's the difference between feeling like you have no idea what you're doing, you're feeling really overwhelmed, you have no idea why your efforts seem to not be going anywhere, versus having a really clear North Star and then knowing that you just need to take consistent action towards that goal. So these are the three most common pitfalls. The first one is trying to make one massive jump to become a data analyst without first building the right experience. The second one is focusing a lot and toiling on personal portfolio projects. I know a lot of resources and a lot of people talk about the value of building personal and niche portfolio projects because you should focus on something that you're interested in or passionate about, but I'm going to be very real with you guys. I have never seen a hiring manager be legitimately interested in someone's personal portfolio project in an interview. And the third mistake is not using your past experience as an advantage when you actually go out into the job hunt. When people fall into these pitfalls, that is what results in something like spraying and praying, not hearing back, not knowing why, and then eventually thinking that maybe you're not really cut out to be a data analyst, when it's actually not a problem with you, it's more so a problem with the approach that you're taking. So there's concrete steps that you can take right now to make sure that you do not fall into these pitfalls. And that leads me to step number two. So accurately assessing where you are means first reflecting on a few key questions. The first question is how many steps away from being a data analyst are you? If you're one step away, that means you're data adjacent. So think of roles like being an engineer, a product manager, a marketing or a finance analyst, or a recent grad with a degree in a technical field. Non-data adjacent roles, which are two steps away from being a data analyst, are roles like being a teacher, being a salesperson, being a music therapist, or maybe having taken a long-term career break over the last few years to do full-time parenting. If you're non-data adjacent, that would mean that usually you have one step in between where you are now to becoming a data analyst. And then for data adjacent roles, if you have the word data in your title, if you have the word analyst in your title, or if you've been working with data and technical tools for about 30 to 40% of your most recent jobs, I would would consider you to be data adjacent. The second question is to reflect on what are your strengths and weaknesses as it relates to data. So there's three main categories that you can consider here. The first one, which is the backbone of being a data analyst, is the technical skills. What is your level of familiarity or fluency in working with tools like Excel, SQL, visualization software like Tableau, Power BI, Looker, Python? The next category is your communication skills. So this is what I consider your ability to confidently, accurately present and communicate across a variety of different kinds of people and different audiences. And then the third category is your business skills. And this is what I consider to be how you combine your technical skills and your communication skills to solve and address the actual questions that you get on the job. So then, given your reflections to these questions, you want to make a realistic plan for how to take that next step. 
So for example, if you're in academia and you um, are in your PhD, and you're finding jobs that are actually really going to use your teaching experience or your research experience, and you're also brushing up on your business skills by understanding business metrics and how that relates to a company, those kinds of jobs might be one step away from you. But if you're aiming for tech jobs or you're aiming for finance jobs that really value that corporate experience, then you would be two steps away. And you would first want to get that intermediary job first, perhaps leveraging your research and PhD background to ramp up to a job that is fully in tech or finance. So in general, if you are one step away, you wanna focus on things like translating your experience on your resume by using data lingo, forming a really cohesive narrative about your transition into data analytics, having projects that really stand out with their business relevance, your interviewing skills, and networking with other people for new jobs, or even networking on your current job so that you can see if you can make your role a little bit more data oriented because you might be one conversation away right now from making your current role more like a data analyst position. And then if you're two steps away, then you want to focus on getting that corporate team experience or building up to that intermediate position by looking at opportunities at your current company, pivoting in your current role, or doing things like unpaid or paid internships or fellowships. And then you want to set a timeline and then lean into these goals. Personally, I'm a very strong believer in writing your goals down and also sharing it with other people. I find that when you're actually sharing your thought process and you're verbalizing the kind of big things that you're working towards in life, you start to more naturally align your actions with that actual North Star. When you have accomplished that next step, then you can reevaluate. So based on where you are now, maybe a few months down the line after you've done that intermediate role, are you now ready to satisfy about 70% of the job requirements? Then at that point, that means you can take the next step, which is starting to apply. Here is a mindset shift for you guys. You are probably not actually starting from scratch. I think a lot of times when we think of the phrase becoming a data analyst, it makes it sound like we need to make some massive transformation to take this huge jump. But this is actually ignoring the value of your previous experience. So you wanna look out for the hybrid role where you already stand out because you're going to be much more valued and also you're gonna feel much more natural in interviews in those kinds of jobs where you already have a true overlap with your past experiences. I'll give you two examples. So uh, these are actually two students from my last cohort. One student was an e-commerce lead and she got a job as a technical account manager at a e-commerce company, Backmarket. Um, and she leveraged her experience as that e-commerce lead and her domain knowledge in e-commerce to transition into this role where she will be using Excel, SQL, and Tableau on the job, but she's actually getting paid to really learn data analytics rather than toiling away on those portfolio projects that don't actually move the needle. Another student was a quality engineer before the cohort and during the cohort, she got a job as a quality data analyst. And here she really leveraged her understanding of quality and reliability metrics and some of the more engineering concepts. And that really stood out for this position against other candidates who didn't have the same domain knowledge. So this could be a variety of different backgrounds. You could have a medical background or a healthcare background. You could have a finance background or a marketing background or maybe a sales and operations background. By the way, for both of those students I just mentioned, this was their first job in the United States. And so they were interviewed viewing in their non-native languages. One of them is from Korea and another one is from Brazil. So if they can do it, you can 100% do it as well. So to make this more concrete, I'll also share a bit about how students have done this from other backgrounds. Jess was a PhD student and she had done a lot of research and kind of technical projects in her background, but she didn't have any corporate experience. So she worked on a contract role as an AI freelancer, and then she really focused more on the industry best practices, her resume, her translation to interviews, and she landed a job as a data science consultant and advisor that actually leverages her teaching experience from when she was a PhD. Pat worked as a bike mechanic and eventually became a bike store manager and a community liaison at a senior home care center. And he focused on taking that community liaison role and pivoting it more toward data. He eventually got a job as a data analyst at Haymarket just a few weeks after his cohort ended. And he is now the person that interviews incoming data analysts. So what do they all have in common? They leverage their unique history. They took the right intermediary steps to get to one step away from being a data analyst. They built the right job hunt package, used the right job hunt strategy. And by the time they were interviewing, they didn't really have to fit being a data analyst because they genuinely were. If you also want to be part of a motivated community and transition into data in the most effective way with me, check out my program below and subscribe for more insights like this. I will see you guys in the next video.